Hi guys, welcome to part three of my engineering book extravaganza. Here, I got all the engineering books. So, well, ones that I haven't covered in part one or two. So here, let's start off with the HP 11C calculator manual. So this is, you know, just a basic calculator manual for the HP 11C Voyager series calculator. This was their, you know, second second from the bottom line of, of calculator. So you had the 10C, which was basic, and they had the 11C, which was slightly better. And this one shows you exactly how to program and all that stuff. Um, it's got a little bit of a rip there that's not so good. But it's got the table of contents on the back, and it's really well written, clear, easy to use, and uh, since I don't have an 11C, pretty useless for me. Next up, we got Fluid Mechanics by Binder, or Binder, I'm not sure. Yep, there's some handwritten notes that I can't read here. And uh, this one is from 1943. And you can tell from the you know, the styling. This is pretty distinctly 40s styling. And here you have everything that's basically covered in this book, but in much less verbose style, as you can see. And with a lot less diagrams and colors. So here you have, you know, nice, well, I guess no diagrams on that page, but really nice examples and things like that. This book gives you no such luxury. You want to learn fluid mechanics, you're going to learn fluid mechanics, and you're going to do it yourself with this book. This one holds your hand quite a lot, which is nice. I really like this book. Next up, we got mechanics of deformable solids. So basically, solid mechanics. This is our TAM-251. Um, the cover is falling apart, but uh, here you got you know, your standard stress-strain relations, um, more circle, it's going to have beam deflections, shear stresses, and all these different examples, which is really nice. I like this book. Alright, so next up we got Merck's 1899 manual. Now this is a 100th anniversary reprint, as you can see in here, but it's pretty interesting uh, little index here for all the different drugs that you can use and administer to your patients. Legal drugs, mind you. And it's got all these different um, diseases and uh, you know prescriptions that you can give in a little index in part two here. So all the diseases known in 1899 were contained in this. This is important. This is not for profit apparently. It's a pretty little, neat little reproduction here. I like it. All right, these are all books that I brought back from college that were in a box that I did not take out from my bookshelf earlier. So let's just bring them back one by one. So here we have. Isaac Asimov actually wrote Easy Introduction to the Slide Rule. Now this is actually quite easy. It doesn't show anything about trigonometry in here. That's pretty much where it stops. But it tells you that. And this is a very nicely written, friendly, you know, introduction to everybody's favorite vintage calculating tool. And it's got a really nice um, forward here. See? Let me see. Yeah, you could read read that, um, you know, pause it or whatever and read that one. It's nice. This is a good book. I got it on Abe Books. A lot of these I got on Abe Books. Other ones I got from Half Price Books. Both very good places to get older books. Here we got Numerical Analysis. This is actually one in a five-part series. This one is also from the 60s. First edition 1965, reprinted 69. And this one is about numerical methods. So, finite difference methods, you know, basically. And one of the coolest parts about this book is it talks about desk machines. Now these are those mechanical calculators that would be put on your desk and they have, you know, a row of zero, you know, zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, all the way to nine. And you would put each number in each column individually. And so it had a, like a ton of buttons on the front. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty intimidating looking. I saw some of those at the Computer History Museum. And here we have also digital computer methods to solving these problems. It's pretty neat. So yes, you can read that one as well later. I really like the styling of this book as well. It's a very, it's a very uh, Helvetica style. I don't know, 
very um, minimalistic and attractive. This color is nice orange here, even though this book is kind of dirty and faded. Next up we got Experimental Stress Analysis. This one is from 1965 and this one definitely shows its age, both from the, the you know, condition of it and yes, see 1965 and the um, fonts that are used in it. But this one is extremely advanced stuff. Uh, basically a an extension of the solid mechanics book I showed you earlier. And this shows you exactly how to set up different gauges to analyze different stress methods. I mean, def different stress modes on your uh, specimen and different uh, gauges and, and equipment in the lab that you can use to analyze that sort of thing. Next up we've got Design of Machinery. I used the 7th edition of this book in class, but the 2nd edition, sorry, I used the 4th edition. The 2nd edition works perfectly fine, too, except that the media inside is not as new. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty old CD-ROM. They had a DVD in there. The system requirements for working model, you can definitely tell that's from a while ago. So yes, this shows you everything you need to be able to design you know, mechanical mechanisms, so like 4-bar linkages, cam followers, engines, pistons, things like that. Everything's in here. And um, yeah, we used this book. I'm not a huge fan of it. I like this book a lot better because it deals with practical matters. And this is Shigley's Mechanical Engineering Design. This one is the third edition. I don't know what edition they're on now, but this, yeah, this cover is absolutely falling apart. But it's still a good book. Oh. Here's a VI reference card that I found in a desk that was being thrown out. Pretty cool. I can put a link to this down below. I uploaded it to my website. I store that in there so it doesn't get lost. And this book is from 1977. See that? This one includes, you know, different methods of design and then all the things you need. To, to design a successful mechanism. So you got strength of materials, you got different stress strain relations, deflection analysis, yeah, see? Here's the uh, table of contents, strength of mechanical elements, design of screws, threads, fasteners, welding, soldering, mechanical springs, anti-friction bearings, lubrication, journal bearings, spur gears, probably helical worm bevel gears, yep, shafts, clutches, brakes, couplings, flexible mechanical elements, elements, and all this other stuff. Pretty well-written book. Um, chapter 5, definitely a, a page turner. I enjoy reading this one. Here we got CRC's Standard Mathematical Tables. This is a cool one because it's from 1986 and um, I really like that year. Here we go. Yeah, we've got all the different mathematical series and stuff that you would need, different tables. Um, instead of using you know your TI-89 or whatever, if you just want a, a quick solution to an integral and you know you're going to need it for a while, you can just copy it out from here and um, it's there. One of the things I like to use this for is trig identities because I always forget those and beyond you know pre-calculus you never need to really memorize them again except for a test you know where they just come back like oh hey remember these? So that's when I go back here and re-memorize re them again and forget them again. Yes. Next up we got a couple of interesting ones. This is Dictionary of Industrial Technology. And uh, for some reason this one's the third edition, this one's the fourth edition. German to English is older than English to German, so I don't understand that. This is a technical dictionary. Um, it's got this really handy reference card for abbreviations in here. Yes. Um, and in the other one it says, uh, in this dictionary, um, these abbreviations are used. Yeah, yeah, it's got in English as well. So, there you go. This is a really interesting one. I've never used it, but I like to have it on my bookshelf. Just one of those things. And then here's the um, English to German version. See how the English is on top of the German here? It's kind of interesting. Here we go. This was discarded from, I think, Purdue University's library. Or Indiana, one of those. Let me see here, I should say I'm not. Yeah, here. So, 
Yeah, okay. I guess I was kind of right both ways. 1979. This one's from 1974. Okay. Next up, we got the Pocket Companion from the Carnegie Steel Company. And these edges are gilded, not for fanciness, but so that they didn't get worn out on the shop floor. You can see that these are pretty dirty. Yeah. This is from 1929. Somebody used this for gum or something. I don't know. Years ago, I guess. This one's from 1921. This is pre-Great Depression. Imagine that. So here we go. These are, this is everything you need for steel. So riveted plates, I-beams, different moments of inertia for the said stuff, um, and standards for structural steel and things like that. So there you go. The Carnegie Steel Company Pocket Companion. This one is the Machinery's Handbook. This is my favorite out of all the books I have. If there's one book I gotta save, it's this one. Not because it's irreplaceable, but because it's invaluable. Really good book. The one that should be on every mechanical engineering student's or machinist's desk at all times. It has everything you need to know. It's got log tables, how to use a slide rule, um, different ball bearings, strength of materials, geometry, uh, moments of inertia, you know, different standards for screws, taps, speeds and feeds, steels, non-ferrous alloys, um, how to draw, how to draw, and how to check engineering drawings, weights and measures, springs, mechanics, basically everything you need to know is in here. And I've had, I've used this multiple times for you know steel hardnesses and things like that, converting between Brunel Rockwell hardnesses. It's got all of that stuff in here in one handy volume. Really a great book to have. Pick up any edition of it. It's worth it. Except for the 29th edition, because the 29th edition had paper so thin that you could see through it. Like Bible paper, but worse. So a lot of people were complaining about that. But you can get any other edition, and it'll serve you just as well. This one is a collector's edition, and it was a reprint of the first edition. What's interesting about this is that they actually had to get a first edition from somewhere else because they didn't have any on hand. And so they borrowed one. This one has gilded edges and it's really, you know, nice shiny looking. And it lives up to its name as, you know, the, the so-called Bible of metalworking and mechanical industries. So it has this little placard here. I, I like this, I guess. And inside, it's got you know, the same stuff as the other one, except that it's much, much older, but also much, much newer. This one, the, the 16th edition that I showed you earlier, which is underneath this box, is from 1962. This one is from 1914. And it's got this handy little ribbon marker here, so you can mark your favorite passages in the Bible of mechanical and machinist traits. So there you go. I like to keep this in the box. I don't really look at it all that much. But when I do, it's a treat. And I really enjoy it. Got on Amazon. I think it's still available on Amazon, actually. And there you have it. My old books collection in three handy videos of about 10 minutes each. So uh, if you enjoyed these videos, please do uh, leave me a thumbs up and comment. Or if you didn't like it, also leave a comment. You know, I guess you wouldn't give a thumbs up. Um, and, uh, have a good day. So, this has been Super V Power in a three-part series about engineering books. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Till then.